My name is Patrick Lonergan. I'm Professor of Drama and Theatre Studies at NUI Galway. Hello, my name is Dr. Catherine Morris. I'm a lecturer in culture community in the university at NUI Galway, and I teach uh, creative writing at University College Dublin. My name is Flora Karen. I'm from Belgium, from Flanders, and I'm provost of the campuses of the KU Leuven, University of Leuven in the province of Antwerp. And I'm also, uh, I have the honor of being president of UNIQ, the University Network of European Capitals of Culture. Thank you so much, Flora. Um, it, I, 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 I first met you a couple of years ago, but in advance of the, the kind of the post that I have, that intriguing and really wonderful title of Lecture in Culture, Community and the University, it was very much a post uh, that was set up with a view to the fact that Galway was becoming um, the European uh, capital of culture in 2020. And, and trying to think into the, the relationship between universities and cultural institutions. Uh, having come out of Liverpool, you know, and, and looked very closely at Liverpool's capital of culture in 2008, I was very intrigued about the university network of European capitals of culture. And I remember kind of getting in touch with you and, and, and talking to Patrick and thinking, you know, is this something that, that, that Galway University, that we could join? and that we could bring into, um, you know, as, as an engagement with the university and the capital of culture. But, but just from the outset, I wonder if you could begin by, by telling um, everybody, what is the University Network of European Capitals of Culture? And what's been your involvement uh, and vision for the organization really as, as, as head of the board? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, uh, I, I think it, I'd best start with the, the foundation of UNIQUE. Uh, then we have to go back about 15 years. Uh, we first met in Page. And uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, at that time, um, we came out of a whole uh, a series of European discussions on a unified university um, uh, uh, space in Europe and um, we had Bologna, we had Sorbonne and it was clear to all universities that we had a threefold task that was research, education and service to society. That was one thing and the whole idea was to make, well to, to uh, paraphrase in, in Trump's words, to make Europe great again I suppose uh, positively, of course, it was to make uh, European economy more competitive uh, in the world, which was necessary at that time because there was threats. Uh, there were threats that European uh, economic growth was slowing down. Now, um, that was a good thing on the one hand because uh, it led to a kind of professionalization in the organization of the universities. Uh, and a more efficient use of um, government subsidies and things like that. It also focused on valorization uh, of knowledge, which was a new thing and uh, was a positive thing for the economy. On the other hand, however, it also led to a, a shift from what, what we call universitas uh, to the more utilitarian thinking in boxes and focus on economic relevance uh, of the Euro, uh, university contribution. So you have uh, the, both sides of, of the coin that were there. And uh, unique, uh, when we came together with a number of universities, was not really a counteraction against this uh, uh, evolution, but more a kind of complementary uh, return to universitas in the sense that uh, university is not only uh, a scientific laboratory uh, and a driving force for economic growth, but uh, it should also be a temple of wisdom and a center of cultural sustainability. So in a sense, this, uh, we wa what we wanted was a return to uh, the, the Rinascimento, the Renaissance of uh, a kind of trans and interdisciplinary cooperation and thinking out of the box, yeah? Away from uh, counting heads of students and counting subsidies and that, 
but back to, to the roots of what universities uh, were in the beginning. And um, it's so proved that the uh, university capital of culture environment was an ideal setting uh, to mobilize universities and researchers from different disciplines to come together in a joint effort to help understand European culture better and disseminate European values. So this awareness uh, that European culture is a patchwork of patchworks, but creating a warmer plate to cover us all, that was the vision that we shared. Uh, and it also, uh, it was also the, the correct setting to uh, in kind of exemplify the um, useful and, and very, um, um, uh, well, let's say the, uh, the contribution to society of the cooperation between town and gown, so between the university and local authorities and cultural actors, etc., that was exemplified by uh, the European capital of culture. Uh, and as such, it, it stressed the uh, regional importance of the university. So universities were interested because of different reasons and researchers as well, because for researchers, Unique is probably one of the only platforms where they can get into contact with colleague researchers from totally different disciplines, but who are focusing on the same themes. So that is a good thing, I guess. That is what UNIQUE stands for. Discussion, dialogue uh, in an academic sphere, but also allowing non-academics to contribute to the debate. Thank you. Patrick? Yeah, so much there to, to talk and think about. I, one of the things that strikes me from what you were talking about is that just as European capitals of culture tend not to fit one mold, it must also be true that unique conferences are probably quite different from one place to the next, um, partly because of different cultures, also different organizers, but also the evolution of the organization as it's gone on. So I, we, you know, we can't talk about the whole history of the thing, unfortunately, but I think it might be interesting to think about what what a successful, unique conference looks like. What are the characteristics uh, of a successful? Let me just point out that the the, the topics of the different conferences uh, uh, were inspired in by by many different things. Sometimes uh, they they simply built on what uh, the European uh, Union called the, the the year, the topic of the year. Yeah, that was one thing. But in, in other case, it, uh, cases, uh, it, the topic was inspired by um, the, the locality of the university and the social, uh, socio-economic situation. Uh, so you had different, uh, different kinds of, of themes. It was also sometimes the, um, the, the faculty of the university that was organizing uh, and their interests were put in, in the picture, which, which means that for, for over the, the 14 years, 14 past years, we have different different themes, but allowing for everyone to uh, fit in their uh, point of view uh, from their discipline. And that, that's always been a good thing. Sometimes it was also about current affairs, for instance, like uh, today uh, in Galway, we have been confronted with this uh, a terrible pandemic and of course this is what what Galway went for what what, what had to be done uh, what about uh, rethinking or reimagining uh, uh, the whole thing yeah? and um, so it's it, it's a combination of many things and if you ask me uh, what conferences uh, have been most memorable um, they have they have been memorable all of them uh, but for different <coughs> different reasons, uh, also not only the the uh, the academic uh, participations uh, were were something that had to be kept in mind, but also uh, the social um, surrounding uh, of of the conference. And uh, one thing, for instance, was the spontaneous solidarity action in 
2018 in Malta, in Valletta, that was, after uh, the uh, the murder of um, the the journalist, um, I think Graziella was her, was her last name, Daphne Graziella, and um, it was a bit awkward because at that time Malta was yeah was not really recognizing what had happened. And uh, uh, all these people from, from, from the, the other parts of Europe were really concerned about it because what happened, what had happened there was an intrusion of exactly these European values that UNIQ also stands for. That was one thing. Um, another thing, a memorable thing was for instance, for another reason, uh, Catherine, you mentioned Liverpool. Uh, well, Liverpool to me was, was a very good example where First of all, we had the uh, collaboration of two universities in the organization, Hope University and University of Liverpool. The opening session uh, was held in the Tate Gallery. Mm -hmm. So you had this, uh, the uh, cultural uh, um, community that was also their authorities. And the Tate Gallery is situated in uh, the Albert Docks, uh, so the regeneration of, of the city of Liverpool was illustrated, but it also gave this historical um, uh, 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 dimension of Liverpool being um, a, a port where we had the unfortunate um, trade of slaves and things like that, etc. So it's this this co this combination of different aspects of culture, culture not only in the narrow sense of um, uh, externalization of our inspiration, etc., but also culture as uh, a collective memory of, of, of our habits and, and, uh, and our past. That was also a good example. Um, but then, of course, there are also uh, not only the conferences, but the, the participations of, of the academics sometimes were very surprising. Uh, I remember uh, a very good presentation of, uh, of research done in, uh, and it's very, uh, I think it's, it's very up to date now, uh, research done in, in the home for elderly people uh, in Flanders, in, in Limburg, where um, more and more uh, first generation immigrants from Italy uh, became um, uh, inhabitants of the elderly home. And then you had the confrontation of, uh, on the one hand, these people going back to the past more and more uh, and their own language and then being confronted in, in, in a d totally different culture. And that was very interesting. I, I had never thought of it like that. But uh, so you see, you have you have different approaches. Uh, I'm also happy about the contribution. And I, I've seen that he's there this year as well, our uh, Polish friend. Uh, who is uh, uh, an expert on social communication, and uh, he's a theologian and a priest. But every every time he he uh, succeeds in in bringing a different angle and uh, opening our views as well. So, yeah, I've I've been happy about many of the of the uh, of the contributions. And what I'm also happy about is that uh, I've seen an evolution. Uh, a twofold evolution uh, in the sense that in the beginning, um, especially from from certain parts from Europe, where um, coming out of the, uh, the the Berlin Wall, etc., and the uh, uh, pre-democratic uh, situation, we had university contributions of people who hardly spoke English and uh, who were there because they had to be there. Yeah. Uh, and then it started with PhD students and uh, younger uh, academics, and um, the quality of the of the uh, contributions have increased in 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 the uh, in the years. Um, plus, also the interest I, I see from universities and from dif different disciplines uh, in doing research on European capital of culture. So I'm very happy in that sense over over these uh, the years that that unique has grown um, intrinsically uh, and content wise especially 
I mean, for me, uh, I suppose that was one of the really um, wonderful things about Unique was the engagement with postgraduate students and the um, participation in an engagement so that, you know, that kind of very new research that they were undertaking as part of either the lead up uh, to a capital of culture or being in the midst of a capital of culture or looking back on, on one. And then kind of thinking about that in a broader pan-European context, it's very uh, wonderful, I think, to build that network among postgraduates uh, and to have that. Um, and that was that was my first uh, unique conference uh, in Valletta, and it was it, it was very moving, I think, and important that we went and made that commemoration to the mur murdered journalist. Um, you know, because it you know it was such a uh, it, it was right in the centre of that city, and you know um, it kind of almost overshadowed everything ar around the the, the 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 celebrations, I suppose, that that were supposed to be happening at that time. I wonder um, if uh, Flora, you know, and if you could say something about how um, your role in, you know, you have an extraordinary title, you know, are, are you, is it Provost of the University of Leuven? Well, it's sometimes called Provost or Academic Director. Uh, of... but that, like when Patrick and I, we came and had a meeting with you in Leuven at the beginning of this year, um, and it was really lovely to see Leuven. Uh, and it, it seems so extraordinary now to, you know, we were just saying about being on a plane or being able to travel or meet in person. Um, and of course, at this time, you would have been with us in Galway, you know, so, so we would have had this, um, this conference all in person, we would have all been giving papers and had a new sense of a network. Yeah. Of course, because we're putting this online, uh, it's very different. But if you had come to Galway, you would have seen that the campus is, is kind of, it's, 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 I mean, it's very large, but but it, it, it you know it's kind of very much in the centre of the city. Whereas your campus seems to be multi-site. It seems to be quite a huge yeah, campus. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, it's 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 the result of uh, the implication uh, of of the uh, implementation of Bologna, in the sense that um, the before there were a number of academic programs that were not organized by the traditional universities, but in uh, other institutions of higher education. Mm. And Bologna said, no, all your, all your academic uh, um, uh, programs have to be under the umbrella of the university. So that is how a number of uh, disciplines such as um, industrial engineers, uh, commercial sciences, and um, uh, in, in the arts faculty, the translators and uh, uh, programs became part of the university. Mm -hmm. And there were that, that ended up in four campuses in the province of Antwerp, which I am uh, responsible for. So um, in that sense, uh, the University of Leuven spreads all over uh, uh, Flanders, uh, with about eight uh, campuses. Um, and that explains, of course, uh, why it, it needs a, a, a very intricate organization. And so, you, like in other universities, you have the vice rectors for uh, education, research, and student affairs, for instance. And then you have the vice rectors for humanities, biomedical, and uh, uh, sciences, exact sciences and applied sciences. Uh, and next to that, you have the uh, provosts or the academic directors of uh, a number of campuses. Uh, and that's how it works. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what is my task mainly uh, is to uh, take care of the interests of the KU Leuven as a whole within the province of Antwerp. So I deal and wheel uh, a lot with local authorities, but also with industry. Uh, and that, it, that explains, uh, and also cultural actors, why I am, am involved in different boards of directors of different uh, things like the Chamber of Commerce, etc. So uh, on the other hand, it's, it's uh, uh, yeah, it, it's the spokesperson, it's the mandatory of, of the rector, the representative of the rector in those, in those places. 
So, so a question that comes from that then, it, when you describe that, that, that kind of campus that's dispersed very widely, this brings us back to the question of how universities interact with capitals of culture. And you gave the example earlier of Liverpool and how the, the two universities there were able to really contribute to the capital of culture in a meaningful way. And I mean, we know looking at the, the history that in, in some places, universities are very closely aligned to capitals of culture, but then in others, you know, for, for various reasons, they're not. But I wonder if that has something to do with the position of a university in a city where, you know, if a university is off somewhere else, as opposed to actually being in the city or dispersed around the city, does that impede its ability to contribute meaningfully to these cultural activities? No, certainly not. Certainly not, because, um, um, well, uh, in, in the case of Leuven, we now have two things uh, coming up. That is uh, the 600 years of the University of Leuven in 25. And uh, that is really a, 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 an, an event that is going to be uh, where, where we're going to be active on all our campuses, yeah. And then in 2030, you have the, the bid of Leuven to become European capital of culture. And there, of course, it's it's mostly the uh, the central um, part of the university in Leuven that that is involved uh, in this. Uh, from the campuses of Antwerp, of course, we have had our European cam uh, capital of culture in Antwerp, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that. Um, from my experience in Antwerp, Antwerp was a big city, a city with a, a rich uh, cultural history, etc. Mm. Um, at that time, it was also in, in more in the beginning. Um, it uh, it led less to um, a contribution of the university. It was more the cultural actors and local authorities who were involved. These days, I see more and more that universities are at the center of uh, the organization, also of the bidding process, mm -hmm. because I saw that one of the students of the programming cultural studies of Leuven has sent in uh, a, a contribution talking about how students were involved. I haven't read it, but uh, that's how I understand it. Uh, so from a student perspective, and that is also a good thing, I guess, that not only the researchers of the university are involved, but also students, uh, not postgraduate students, but also master students uh, can be involved in the whole process. Mm -hmm. So it's a good evolution as well. Yeah, it's, it's a great example of the way in which universities don't have to be a place that culture is studied from a distance, but actually that the university can itself be a place where, where culture is both produced and enjoyed by people and that it's part of the, a city or a region's um, cultural infrastructure, I think, is, you know, so in other words, not to see it as separate. Well, uh, uh, Patrick, uh, I saw a very good example of that in Umeå in Sweden, uh, because um, to, to me that was, that was a surprise, but there was an enormous contribution of the students uh, with culture on campus at that time. And um, they were also involved, well, it was a combination of research, education, culture. Uh, for instance, they had a, a, a pop group singing uh, songs in Sami, you know, the, the, the ethnic uh, people from, from Lapland, mm. and with, with the whole history of, uh, 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 well, not so very democratic uh, attitudes toward these people, and that, that was that was very good. And they brought pop music in Sami, uh, and that was an initiative of of, of the students themselves. So uh, you, you can go always all, all, every different way, but uh, I think participation from students, but also participation from from the public in European capital of culture is is very important. Of course, um, Flora, the whole, um, you know, that initial formation of the European Union and, and, and a very famous quote, whether it was really said or not, of, you know, um, if we were to begin again, we'd begin with culture. Uh, and, and, you know, a capital of culture, it's an opportunity to reflect on um, 
on the arts and culture of a city, on, 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 it, on its identity, on, on what, you know, if we think about Galway and we look at that beard, it was so much about, it's, it's, it's an extraordinary and very beautiful uh, landscapes, the islands, that, that very deep history of, of, of cultural revival, um, you know, through, through literature, through music, through theatre. Uh, you, you know, Galway is very strong in its, um, in its festivals. Uh, it's you, you know it has an international arts festival. It has theatre festivals. Uh, so you know, in the sense of, of music, has been very kind of key in 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 all of that dynamic. And of course, the Irish language. So a language that you know, in in kind of over you know so many years of colonial occupation, the diminishment of the Irish language, and then these areas called Galtax, you know, which is kind of trying to sustain a language and a culture around a language. Um, Simultaneously, the, the irony of, of, of capitals of culture is often that the humanities, I mean, Patrick and I teach in drama, uh, theatre, performance, um, you know, have backgrounds in, in, in literature, in curation, in, in the visual arts. And the, the struggle to keep those kind of practice based areas of education alive. I mean, you talked about a centre for translation at Leuven. The, the diminishment of European languages and language teaching and learning is very big. And so it, it, it can often seem like a contradiction of, you know, a celebration of, of, of culture in, in cities in which there are very few artist spaces, in which it's very, very expensive for artists to live, in which we see the struggle of our students to move through programmes into, uh, into a living dynamic that includes housing and and a, and a career path so in a way we were hoping that our, our, our coming together in Galway in association with the European Cultural Parliament might have been an opportunity to build greater networks and of course the pandemic this year has added to that sense of crisis in the arts and culture and I just wondered if you could you know if you could give us some insights into uh, the, the difficulties that, you know, in, in your position and unique in that overall view, but also in that head of, uh, you know, the, uh, the provost of such a large university. What have been the, the key challenges for you during this pandemic? Uh, well, I, I think that uh, we mainly focused on safety and security for uh, everyone for students and personnel first yeah but uh, the second thing was to keep everything going as far as it could be uh, because um, uh, education and research are fundamental for uh, for society mm. and uh, we also see that that is also the reason why schools are kept open uh, in Flanders uh, it also adds to uh, um, uh, preserving democracy because we see that uh, in, in times of, of pandemic, um, especially uh, children and youngsters from um, families that are uh, not so uh, uh, well off, yeah, have more difficulty because they don't have three uh, laptops at home to follow the courses online, etc. So uh, our main thing was, and we started this academic year, we were the only university to start uh, on campus for four weeks to allow the first year students especially to uh, adapt to university life and to get some friends so that they could go on afterwards uh, when they were online all the time. Uh, so we, we were very happy about that, and then we stopped, and uh, it it was it, we very we were very concerned, and we are still very concerned about the uh, psychological health of the students uh, being confronted with loneliness. And well, in my view, it, when you have a crisis, it always brings out the best and the worst in people, I guess. Uh, so uh, you have to be able to manage that because. Uh, well, we also try to 
when you look at lockdown uh, parties of students, etc., yeah, that is the worst that is brought out. Uh, we also see, and most of the students keep to the rules and uh, are very uh, uh, solidary with with the others, and also towards community where they where they live, if they are in in rooms. Um, main concern, uh, or another concern, of course, was. Um, from our experts who are part of the crisis cells in, in government and um, the, yeah, their, their frustration uh, from many months uh, of politicians versus uh, experts. Yeah. And now this has gone to the side that uh, all virologists uh, are now in the crisis cells. So that is a good thing, I guess. And they have contributed because it, it, at a certain moment, uh, the general public um, didn't believe anything of politicians anymore, and they listened to the uh, to the uh, the academics, and and that has given a, a support to um, communicating to people what what should be done, and it's it, they accept it more from from our experts than from from politicians. So university has has played a very uh, played a very big role there as well, in in trying to maintain uh, the uh, control over the pandemic, and that's a good thing, I guess. Um, uh, I don't know if that if that answers your question. It, yeah, it really does. I mean, I suppose that I was very uh, moved when we first talked. Many months ago, uh, you know, in, 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 in looking at the draft for the call out for papers and you were telling me that um, Leuven had put together safe spaces for students who uh, were in environments that were dangerous for them uh, and that were antithetical to being able to, to continue their studies. So yeah. we thought that that was a very powerful initiative in facing into inequality, but also the difficulty of domestic circumstances for many um, for many students, you know, and practitioners at universities. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, certainly, yeah. I mean, I think that the question we're all asking as well now is, as we anticipate what we all hope will be the end of the pandemic, there are some things that we want to do less of and ideally never do again in some cases, but there are probably many things we've learned how to do that we're going to continue to do, including things like online teaching and um and maybe you know consuming less stuff and traveling less uh, and so on so I, in a way it's an impossible question really to answer but have you any thoughts about what a european capital of culture might look like post covid yeah well uh <laughs> the european capital of culture i think that um Galway has proven that uh like many universities who also organize conferences, that there is an alternative, yeah, if necessary, yeah. But uh, I, I do believe that a physical confrontation uh, cannot be uh, replaced by uh, online initiatives. The, uh, the pandemic has brought about a tremendous growth of uh, different creative alternatives. So that is a good thing, yeah. But uh, the, the the physical encounter and experiencing, I, I compare it to uh, uh, reading ebooks or reading a book. Yeah, I prefer still I still prefer reading a book. That means I have the book in my hands. I I, I feel it, and I can go from there to there. And, and, and that is a bit the difference uh, when, when you have everything online, uh, you follow everything, but it's not the same after all. So my guess is that uh, we evolve into a situation where um, we will have a hybrid situation where you have the uh, physical encounters for people who can do that, yeah. Uh, uh, for the local people, for um, yeah, those who do not come from a red zone, uh, who can go there, and for other people to join uh, via online uh, uh, information. The only thing that the cultural sector will have to find out is how to uh, 
attract uh, finances for it. Mm. Yeah. Because if you put everything online and it's costless, uh, the cost is for you. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's not how it works. So unless, unless the local authorities are willing to pay for everything. Mm. What is a good thing, I don't know if you've heard about it, but uh, a fortnight ago, two or three weeks ago, uh, there was this uh, joint um, uh, statement of Europa Nostra and uh, uh, European uh, Council uh, about a new deal, a new cultural deal for Europe. And uh, I think this is, this is a good thing that is going to come out of the pandemic that everyone understands now that it is culture that keeps us together at this moment. Mm. That is what we have. That is what we have in common. And uh, that it is, it is the responsibility uh, of, of governments to, uh, to support that. Uh, in, in Belgium, for instance, uh, in Flanders, we now have part of the money uh, that is given to companies also goes to the cultural sector. Mm. Thank you. Very good. So uh, uh, that that consciousness of uh, culture and, and and cultural activity, cultural uh, artists and and museums and uh, concert halls, etc., as a uh, as an integral part of a, a, a living and livable society, I think that is something that we have learned. Um, it, it is. Of course, it's, a, it's, it's just a question of how long this will be kept in mind, of course. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Um, Flora, you mentioned that Leuven is, is, is to be the capital of culture, and I wondered if you might just tell Well, it's, it's still a bit going on. Uh, there are two other cities that are uh, also candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, and. Uh, one of the other cities uh, is comparable to Leuven in the sense that it also has a big university and uh, it also has a, a rich history, uh, but it doesn't have the in innovation uh, capital of Europe at this moment. No, we'll just have to wait and see, but it could be that it's a, a typical Belgian situation where you have two big fish uh, with many things to offer uh, and uh, the third one <laughs> uh, runs away with the, with the bone. Yeah, so mm. it's, uh, in a sense, it's a pol political decision. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah? Mm. But nevertheless, uh, I, I always think that even if you have your local or your national competition uh, of the bids for European capital of culture, it's a good thing because it forces uh, the cities to think about culture and to think about uh, cultural events and possibilities for the for the for the region and in a sense it it will yield something yeah it's it's a bit like um, well you know the problem uh, when you have to uh, write a proposition or proposal for uh, a grant for instance uh, yeah and you don't get the grant yeah but you have done the whole process, the thinking process. So something sticks to it. Uh, so, yeah. No, it's, it's never a waste of time, but I hope it's, I hope it's not undiplomatic to say that we, we look forward to uh, the possibility anyway of attending Unique in Leuven in 2030, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so too, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, if, if, if it's in the other cities, in one of the other cities, we will have it in, in Belgium as well then, uh, anyway. Uh. Laura, um, just before we finish, uh, you know, I mean, for I think for both Patrick and I, it's been a real, it's been really terrific for us under such difficult, bizarre circumstances to have such a, uh, an engaged, fruitful um, conversation with you and, and to, to be putting together the, um, the online special issue of the journal. Uh, I just wanted, before we finish, is there anything that um, we haven't asked you that you would like to have been asked or that, that you would like to ask? Ah, ha, 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 ha. That's very difficult because you were very thorough, I have to say. Uh, uh, well, 
we haven't talked about is uh, um, the, the broader uh, thing, because ECOC, European Capital of Culture, is, is one part of this uh, European uh, unification. That I, I don't like the word unification. It's more uh, coming together in Europe. Um, and uh, I think at this moment, uh, Europe is really under threat uh, um, from within. And, and that is that is something that perhaps at one of the other conferences we we will have to talk about because uh, well uh, a good friend and colleague of mine from the uh, uh, faculty of social sciences uh, she compares it to uh, it's it, to a Greek drama but it's it's evolved into uh, the, the monster of Frankenstein in a certain sense. Um, we have to go back to the roots and we have to concentrate on European values and European values, uh, well, partly we have a history and we, we shouldn't forget that, uh, that it's an accumulation of our classical past, our Christianity and uh, 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 enlightenment and, and the Revol uh, French Revolution, enlightenment. Uh, and it, it goes further. You have the influxes from other uh, cultures, etc. It's it's the whole evolution that is important, but that focuses on a humanist uh, approach of, of our values of democracy, solidarity, freedom of speech, and things like that. And we should keep it like that. And, and on the other hand, uh, as well, just to say, it's such a it's such an incredible moment because. It's hard to believe that in the midst of pandemic, Brexit is still happening and it's kind of it's moving at a pace. Um, and I remember that at, um, you know, a, a very big uh, study uh, in Liverpool, not so many years ago, reflecting on the capital of culture. Uh, you know, it, it, Brexit, the, the vote had just gone through and everybody was anxious about what that would mean. And I think that you took the decision that actually it would make no difference to unique and the you know an inclusion within that organization, which I think is 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 very positive, very dynamic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're talking about Europe as as a as a space, uh, not as a, a political structure. Yeah, uh, we leave politics to others, but I think we 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 are in 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 a, in a position where we can point out to other people that uh, things should be kept in mind and uh, should be checked uh, all of the time. And that is why I think it's good that everyone is talking now about the uh, sustainable development goals, yeah? Well, if you check these sustainable development goals, you can also do that for culture uh, and uh, concentrate on how we should keep in mind that Europe, is a combination and what I said, it's a patchwork, yeah? But before it, it I can compare it differently. Before I think Europe was uh, like a, a Roman mosaic, you know, these Roman mosaics where you have the signs of the Zodiac, for instance, and every country, every nation was a sign of the Zodiac. This has gone because uh, a nation, uh, uh, a geographic, a political geographical um, space is not uh, a unity anymore. It's a patchwork in itself. So that's what I called about the patchwork of patchworks. But on the whole, it, ha it creates a whole and this whole should go back to our basic European values and we have to stick to them Thank and you, make sir. sure that, uh, that everyone uh, implements them. Thank you. Very good. Well, that I think brings our conversation to a conclusion. We've covered a huge amount, as you said, in, in a relatively short period of time. Um, but but also I think what we've done is, is really point to all of the things that we need to keep in mind as we go forward as well with Unique, with Capitalism Culture, um, but also as people with a shared concern for, for the, the strength and durability of, of Europe, both as an idea and, and as a place indeed uh, as well. So, so thanks very much. It's, it's really unfortunate that we can't have you in Galway to have this conversation in person um, and other conversations as well, but, um, but really appreciate yeah. your time. One day, perhaps, uh, I'll get to Galway then and, and we'll see each other. 
Anyway, I would like to thank both of you and, uh, of course, the Moore Institute and the university for taking on this very, very difficult task of finding uh, uh, an alternative for the annual conference and uh, that way of bridging the uh, disillusion because you and, and we had hoped to be in Galway uh, to come together and, and to have wonderful debates. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so it must have been a very big disillusion for you too, but notwithstanding that, you overcame <laughs> this uh, and you, you gave us new hope and uh, were able to put in uh, this idea of uh, an online issue. So I'm very grateful to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Flora. Thank you, Patrick. <coughs>